idea of how we do that. The model that I kind of researched in terms of looking at my practice and came up with this three framed model that looks fabulous on the power. <laughs> Anyway, so the three point model is starts with creativity, it's not the first point, creativity is the big word and creativity is the informant of the process of delivering dance and I really believe that's where you have to start. You have to explore and gain knowledge of your own creativity before as a dancer you can actually engage other people with their personal creativity. And I don't always think that artists, because they're so busy of delivering their services, actually take time to discover their own creativity. So the first frame of this then is that you have the creative, creative, creative process as the informant, you have the dancer and facilitator who comes into healthcare environments or into work with older people, and then the second framework is that you have staff level and then you have staff training and skill building so that you are actually offering a training program so that staff, for a starting point, can explore their own creativity and then they can come alongside the dancer. They can then use their creativity to assist the dancer to deliver a program of creativity and lifelong learning to the third frame which is the service user. And the service user in the delivery of the programs that I've been doing in Long Bracken, the starting point for that in all my classes is that you are here not as a patient, not as a service user, but you are here as a dance student to learn the skills of lab and dance. That's ultimately what my role is as a dance teacher. And from that, the benefits that then feed from that are in a different layer to the benefits that are what I would call the well-known benefits. So the benefits that we have then that come down from that framework which really is in truly engaging with the creative process, being guided by the creative process, releasing and unlocking, truly unlocking the creative process is very dynamic. And it is this idea of enabling, as Heather said, giving a voice to. The idea, for example, um, when I said to the older people, well, whenever you learn these skills, what do you gain from it? And they will say, well, I have a real sense of achievement, but I've actually learned something at this stage in my life. Now, I can tell you, when I started to work with the ladies from Ballyon Day Centre and the fabulous support from the staff that I have there, Josie Duffy, when she told me she was 102 years old, Josie was determined to learn the skills of lab and dance. And why shouldn't she? learn the skills of lab and dance. She has every right to do that. She, she explored the levels, she explored the points of space, she explored the shape, and she created the most dynamic, beautiful, absolutely 102 years of experience in that moment. So I think actually dance again, of all the art forms, is also the most elitist or it can be, because it excludes people very easily. It's non-inclusive in many ways, even as a dancer, you know, if you get past 25, you're like what you used to call <coughs> an maternity unit, an elderly prim, you know, you were well past it. Now, can you